In the world today, there is an overwhelming amount of increasing knowledge. And our goal as covenant believers should be to daily focus on obtaining a divine understanding of the knowledge of the scriptures by the leading of Father's Ruach that can result in gaining both wisdom and truth. This was the ultimate purpose of why Father gave us his Torah as a guide on how to obtain the blessings and avoid falsehood and disobedience, which leads to the curse. It has been said that Hebrew is the only language on earth that was once dead and nearly forgotten for hundreds of years and was resurrected during the 19th and 20th century in parts of Europe and Israel. And this was actually prophesied in Zephaniah 3, verse 9. And I believe not only have we been living in those prophetic days in our generation, but the prophecy may well have been speaking of biblical Paleo-Hebrew, because that was the language in Zephaniah's day. And what I'm going to share with you concerning the primary difference between Biblical Paleo-Hebrew and Modern Hebrew is very significant and far surpasses the difference in the shape of letters and how letters are pronounced. And yet, we cannot ignore that there has been an ongoing debate over whether today's Modern Hebrew is a direct continuation of biblical Hebrew, or is something closer to a combination of various Yiddish and other dialects mixed together, creating a hybrid language that is more Slavic than Semitic. And whether or not Moses could comprehend the linguistics of modern Hebrew is up for debate. But now, I'm not going to condemn modern Hebrew, for it absolutely has its place. In society today, and its resurrection is definitely miraculous. But where it differs from biblical Hebrew is of profound significance and something everyone who desires to learn biblical or modern Hebrew should be made aware of, and that is this. Since its resurrection, one major difference between biblical and modern Hebrew seems to be clearly how Hebrew words were originally created during biblical times and how they are created today. For it seems modern Hebrew has moved away from its spiritual roots in this regard. Most of us have never thought about this before, but modern Hebrew creates words like any other common language in the world today, and that is phonetically, by sound. And this is why vowel points have become so important. But biblical Hebrew, for thousands of years before the Masoretes, had no vowel points and quite possibly may have been a simpler language to learn, speak, and write, with far less grammar rules, with its original focus on the meaning of each Hebrew letter when creating words. Because each word in biblical Hebrew paints a beautiful picture with inherent multiple meanings, giving the language a depth like no other language on earth. To illustrate this, let's take the modern English word lava and ask the Google translator to translate this English word in modern Hebrew, whereby it could be written and spoken today. Modern Hebrew completely ignores the meaning of each letter, and rightly so, and completely focuses on the phonetics created by the vowel points. The word given for lava is Lamed Bet He, and is completely derived at phonetically. Proof of the difference between biblical Hebrew and modern Hebrew is when we take this Hebrew word for lava and locate what it meant in biblical Hebrew. What we see is the creation of a beautiful word picture that was created firstly by the meaning of each Hebrew letter and expresses the word picture her heart. Now, Rabbi Akiva stated that the spelling of the letter Lamed produces an acronym, which means a heart that understands knowledge. In other words, the goal of Lamed should be heart knowledge. And since the Lamed is the tallest letter, it further represents the prominence of learning and understanding the Hebraic heart. Given the goal 
of what the creator of this word was trying to express. It is no surprise. It starts with the Hebrew letter Lamed. The predominant meaning of the Hebrew letter Bet means in, as inside. And one meaning of the Hebrew letter He is a picture of Elohim within the human heart. And when the He is placed at the end of a word, it feminizes the word. And thus we see a beautiful word picture created in short form into the English as her heart. And although the spelling is the same, whether it was pronounced phonetically the same in each dialect is up for debate. But one thing is certain. The two words have completely different meanings. And we could do this with hundreds of words. But this illustrates the fundamental difference between biblical and modern Hebrew. Now, sadly, there are those today that would try to imply the grammar rules concerning the use of the Aleph Tav in modern Hebrew today as being used the same way in biblical Hebrew as well. It is no secret that in modern Hebrew, the Aleph Tav has completely lost all spiritual significance and has been reduced to only a direct object pointer. And rightly so, because modern Hebrew today has lost the very foundation of what made the language so inspiring. And the Aleph Tav can only be a grammar mark in a language that is little more than a token shell of what the language originally used to be. For had the twelve tribes obeyed Torah and also received Yeshua as Messiah, they would have never been divided and scattered to the nations. And consequently, modern Hebrew would more than likely not exist today. In my personal opinion, to imply that Moses used the Aleph Tav as nothing more than a direct object pointer in Paleo-Hebrew grammar, with no spiritual significance whatsoever, is not only extremely speculative, it cannot be proven. In fact, not only do the patterns whereby the Aleph Tav is placed in Scripture rebuff this mindset of theology, the most famous rabbis in Jewish history going back thousands of years, would strongly disagree as well. For anyone who is astute in Hebrew can easily see that apparently in the mind of Moses and the prophets, the focus and challenge that they faced with their language when writing had to be in the creation of new words by the meaning of each Hebrew letter. And secondly, they reasoned the phonetic pronunciation of the word. To further establish and prove my point, let's look at the original Paleo-Hebrew word picture, fear, that incorporated the Aleph Tav, and for good reason, thus creating a very profound word, because this word is only used to describe the only fear that we should have, and that is the fear of Elohim, which leads to knowledge, wisdom, and blessings. The Hebrew word incorporates the letter resh for the meaning of the head or face and the yod for the meaning of the hand and the Aleph Tav as a symbol to represent the sacredness of Elohim and the covenant. In fact, there is a Hebrew word picture for the word fear that uses the same two letters, resh and yod, but places them between a reverse Aleph Tav, which from studying this seems to symbolize and point to something that is finite and can be measured, such as a man in this case. And subsequently, this word is always used to describe the fear we should not have, the fear of man. Hebrew is so amazing, and these patterns cannot be ignored. If you want to gain a proper understanding of biblical Hebrew. Look at this Hebrew word, majesty. This is meant to most often describe Elohim. It begins with the letter Gimel, which means to lift up in biblical Hebrew. The Gimel is combined not only with the Aleph Tav, but the Hebrew word Aleph Vav Tav, which is very significant because it is the Hebrew word for sign. So we see a beautiful word picture being expressed 
that implies a meaning of lifting up a sign. And the best word the English translators thought would fit is majesty. Now, understanding the linguistics of any language takes years of study and research. And I do not consider myself a scholar on any language. But what I am sharing with you is a fundamental difference between biblical and modern Hebrew. The fact is, there has never been a language like biblical Paleo-Hebrew. And it was set apart and ordained from the foundation of the world to be the only living and divine language on earth. Now, the larger a Hebrew word is, the more we find smaller root words that are incorporated, which enhances the meaning being expressed. One particular larger word, for example, is the very profound word, entrance. The word is used one time with this spelling, but it is used to describe the most important entrance that has ever existed, the entrance to the temple. And Ezekiel truly outdid himself when he created this word because he actually incorporates a word that was used by Daniel seven times to describe the place he and his companions were placed with the Messiah, the fiery furnace. And he has simply added the Hebrew letter He for behold and the Yod for hand. Now, no one can be completely sure if this is what Ezekiel was implying when he created this word picture. But given what he was describing as the entranceway to the temple and the fact that Elohim is a consuming fire, it does paint a beautiful word picture. Bottom line, when we study and look at biblical Hebrew, our focus should be first and foremost on the meaning of each Hebrew letter and the word picture being expressed because therein lies the ability for us to enhance any word and draw profound significance in what the original authors may have been implying that the majority of the time the English translation does not and cannot be completely expressed. My personal focus for the last five years has been solely on the study of the Aleph Tav character symbol that was used very profoundly by Moses and the prophets. And the reality is that the Aleph Tav has been a beautiful word picture in itself for thousands of years that expresses the strength of the covenant and was used to enhance the meaning of the subject matter in a living and divine language. What I am doing is not Kabbalah or Jewish mysticism, and I am not looking for hidden codes. I am exposing irrefutable patterns whereby the Aleph Tav was originally placed in Scripture, and the evidence to what the facts reveal proves its spiritual significance. I believe with all my heart that Father wants to reveal to his covenant children the profound truth and significance of this character symbol to levels we have only just begun to understand because it has the ability to both change and correct our perspective of his living word. The second edition of the Messianic Aleph Tav scriptures not only reveals all the freestanding Aleph Tavs, it also reveals hundreds of words that incorporate the Aleph Tav, that corporately are used thousands of times, and for good reason, because the Aleph Tav truly is the Holy Grail of the Scriptures. I'm Bill Sanford, trying to put the Aleph Tav in proper perspective in our day. Shalom.